All right, so let me explain the situation here. Uh, I spoke yesterday about superstitions, and, and I think everything that happened cemented my superstitions even more because I didn't get a chance to talk to Orion. I didn't get to see my road witch, and I didn't, you know, everything that I didn't get my Almond Joy bar until a lot later. But, you know, <laughs> these things are like they bring you good luck on the trip, or that's what the superstition is. And I didn't get to do any of those, and now I'm in Denver. Uh, I didn't want to go up into the mountains until Sunday night because, you know, Saturday is when all the city folk go up there. And uh, I'm a city folk too, by the way. Uh, but all you hear all night long are gunshots and hooting and hollering and people with fires that they shouldn't have. And uh, it's just, it's not good to go up there on a Saturday night. When you go up there on like a Sunday night or a week night, uh, it's really nice. Uh, you feel like you're the only person up there. Uh, but... I got done with everything so early. I, you know, there was four things I wanted to accomplish on this trip. One was uh, to get my book sorted out and to, to check everything in my book and make sure it's okay. The second thing is to go up and uh, spend the night in at Goose Creek. Goose Creek is the goose part of Valentine Goose. So I wanted to go up there and spend the night. And then uh, from there, I was going to do the Great La Junta Caper. And... Then from the Great Lahunta Caper, go up and to Valen, it's near Valentine, Nebraska, which is where I was going to spend, you know, there's a grasslands that's, that's open to the public, and I was just going to go out there. It's on the map of the United States of uh, light pollution. This is one of the darkest spots I could find that's like in between here and Denver, and it's really dark. I mean, there was like no light pollution there. So uh, I was looking forward to going there and doing some stargazing. So those were the four big things I accomplished. Now, when I left work, um, I planned on getting into Denver like late Friday night. And um, what happened was I fell asleep. Uh, I knew, you know, I made this trip several times and you get tired because it's like a Nebraska is the most boring state ever. And if you're not driving at night, you're not seeing UFOs and stuff, which is true. And, uh, I pulled into a, a rest area and I just like, I had to close my eyes and I slept for three hours, which is about what I expected. So I'm driving, I'm not even another third of the way through Nebraska and I'm like, man, I'm getting really tired again. So I pulled into, you know, you don't want to drive tired because it's like driving drunk, you, you just, it's really weird. So I pulled into another uh, rest area and I went back to rest my eyes. When I woke up, I was really disoriented because like it was getting dark and there were storms and uh, you know, trying to shake it off. I look at my phone and I'd slept for six hours, which is bizarre because at home, when I get home from work, I don't even sleep for six hours. So I don't know. I must have been exhausted. I can't imagine I'm exhausted. I usually get home from work and sleep about four hours. Um, and I don't have an alarm clock because, you know, I just, I, I work nights and I just sleep until I wake up, which is, has been about four hours. So I'm assuming that's what my body needs. If I try to lay in bed even longer, I'm not sleeping, so why bother? But anyway, I slept for, that's nine hours of sleeping that I didn't account for. So I actually got into Denver about 4 a.m. And uh, I spent the Saturday morning, I did my book thing, I was done by noon. And I had planned like a whole day, I thought this would take me into the evening. So I was done by noon and I uh, didn't really know what to do with myself. <laughs> So I went and I had my first meal. Uh, oh, it was delicious. And uh, I called around. I thought, you know what? I'm going to get a hotel room. I'm going to do some swimming and uh, head out to Goose Creek in the morning. But then a funny thing happened. When I left the restaurant, I would made I booked a hotel. And I left the restaurant. And, man, my car just started jumping up and down. And it was the tires were, were, would stop and then spin. And I'm like, holy crap. And, you know, all the lights on my dashboard started blinking. Um, I, like, slowed down, and I'm like, because I'm in the middle of the, one of the most busy intersections you've seen. And it's like the road is at least six or seven lanes wide because there's two turning lanes and two turning lanes this way, and the other lanes can go straight. Like, there's four lanes that can go straight. And I'm, like, right in the middle of this, and I'm thinking, holy shit, let, please just let me get out of here. So... I get, I'm, you know, from the from the restaurant to the hotel, um, it's only a couple blocks, and uh, I'm like, 
turn onto the side road and I'm just going really easy and it's working okay it's not skipping anymore and I get to the hotel room I get to the hotel and they won't let me check in early you know because like it was like 12 30 at that point and uh so I'm in the hotel parking lot and I, I do bring I do carry certain things in my car one of the things I carry is a code reader and I'm reading the codes and it said my transmission speed sensor had stopped working and then uh it had it couldn't be read but then it cleared itself and I'm googling this you know because that's what you do and I googled the code and I googled this and according to everything I read if your transmission sensor goes out that's it you got to replace it and I'm like but <laughs> it started working again uh, even before I cleared the code it was working you know that because the, the in a Honda the, the, there's, there's lights on the dash that will blink codes and you know, according to that code, the sensor was out, and then you know when I got my card, you know when I got my uh, computer reader out, it said, you know the code was computer speed sensor. So I turned everything off and um, started the car back up. No flashing lights. I drove around the block. Uh, I did some of the things to test. You know, I floored it. I slammed on the brakes. I sped around the corner. I'm like, it's not breaking again. So this is freaking me out. The thing is, if I go up into the mountains and this happens, it's not good news. But I'm kind of torn right now because uh, I'm going to call around and find out a lot of auto places are open today. I'm going to pick up the speed sensor. It's, a, it's supposed to be an easy replacement. I do have my toolbox with me. Um, so, who knows? I might still go out and decide. Driving around Denver today is what will decide for me what I do next. Um, but I'm hoping, you know, I, I looked up and there's a lot of uh, auto parts that are open on Sundays. So I'm going to see if I can get this part. And if I can just carry it with me, that'll give me comfort. Because um, supposedly all I got to do is remove the air cleaner and it's right there. So hopefully that's true. And, uh, you know, you don't have to go underneath. You don't have to jack it up. Uh, it's something I could probably do anywhere. So I'm going to see if I can find the part. And uh, that'll give me comfort. And that'll... Driving around today, I'll see if the codes flash or if it gets me stuck anywhere. Uh, that will decide what I do. But uh, one of the things that happened was when I was driving in Denver last night, I was like looking at my map and um, I thought, you know, I could do the Great La Junta Caper tonight. You know, I, I got just enough hours. I drive there because I wanted to be there at, at 2 a.m. And I thought, wow, I could be there, do the caper, and get out. And, you know, that this was something I had planned for, like, it was, this was the third part of my journey. So I did that, and I, I drove up, and, of course, nothing goes like you, you, you plan when you're planning a caper. It's just, it was a comedy of errors. And, uh, but I finished it, uh, and I can't tell you what it is, because it's a caper. Uh, I got contraband in my vehicle now. But anyway, <laughs> I got... Uh, I got that done, so I don't have to worry about that. So right, that was something that I, I'd planned, you know, a day and a half for a day driving there, and I would have to wait to 2 a.m. and then do the caper, and then drive to Nebraska after that. So I'm ahead of schedule. I'm way ahead of schedule. I got two things done. Uh, I really, I kind of do want to go up there. It's a 70 mile trip up, and of course 70 miles back, and it's good weather. I'm looking outside. It's clear blue skies. Uh, I'm torn. Like I said, driving around, it's only uh, it's only like seven o'clock in the morning. I got to wait two more hours before I can start calling around to the uh, the auto parts store. But yeah, and then like everything else is going wrong. Like I said, I forgot my computer at home, so I got to make sure I could keep clearing the the memory out of my out of my phone because it's gonna fill up every time I make one of these videos. And uh, then I couldn't find my charger. I, thought, I knew for sure I'd grab my charger, but. Maybe it's in the car, but I got up here to the hotel room and my phone was dying. Luckily, I got one of those little battery things, uh, so I was able to charge my phone for the little battery. But I, I keep that in my car. Um, and then my phone, see, now right now my phone is on a tripod. And I have this little clippy thing, like this, and it clips onto the phone and turns your tripod into a, a phone holder. And that broke. I mean, right now it's just kind of balanced on there, uh, but there's nothing holding it. If I bump the tripod, my phone's going to fall off. I thought, what the deal you know and I don't know I, I 
I guess enough went right that I'm happy, but now I got this transmission issue and I broke this and I can't find my charger and little things. I forgot my computer. Oh, and <laughs> I forgot to bring, I could have swore this was in my camera bag, but you know, I have a, an older Canon camera and I have three batteries for it. And uh, I, I have a little charger for the batteries because they're, they're the square boxy batteries and you have to recharge them. I thought that was in my camera bag, so I don't have that. And I've already used up one battery. Uh, so once the two other batteries are gone, my camera's done until I get home. So I'm like, God dang it. So I'm limited on my phone. I'm limited with my camera. I'm being very careful. I'm not turning it on. I, I used it with my book tour to prove that I was at all the sites. And I took pictures of the monuments and of the things. And uh, so that's, I, I used up a whole battery for that. And, you know, when you're in the mountains, there's just everything you look at you want to take a picture of. And I don't post, I probably will post five or ten pictures out of, I don't know, sometimes I take hundreds and hundreds of pictures. But, um, and they're for me, I don't share them. Uh, I like to sit down and, and look and, oh man, I remember climbing that thing and I remember going there and that's where I saw the bear and that's where I saw the elk. And, you know, it's just fun to, to do it. And, uh, but I'd ha I'm going to have to be really conservative. One of the things I do like to do is, is this is the same time of year I did this, but I was at this same campsite and the moon was rising over the mountains. And it's like right now, it was a new moon two nights ago. So it was just, a, last night I saw it, it was just a sliver, you know, just a, barely a sliver of a moon. And that was rising over the mountains, like in the trees. And I got, my camera has like the best zoom you've ever seen. It's, it's fantastic. And I could zoom right in on the craters of the moons, but have silhouettes of the pine trees in front of it. And it's just the coolest pictures ever. And I've learned so much more about my camera now because I was having trouble focusing and, and stuff. And uh, yeah, I've learned a lot more about my camera, about how the manual focus. Uh, this camera does so much, but it's, um, it's just incredible. And, you know, I've zoomed in on, on craters of the moon before, but that was the perfect moment was that coming up over the mountains and, and having the silhouettes of the trees and, and rocks and then the sliver of the moon like just poking up over the mountain it was just awesome uh i was hoping maybe to do that again uh so i don't know driving around like i said i gotta i got away i'm gonna go get the free breakfast and and wait till nine o'clock and start calling some of these places hopefully i can get the part uh hopefully i won't have to drive across town and miss a closing or something uh but yeah, I'm good. And I had my first shower. Oh my gosh. Uh, I showered twice this morning. Uh, sitting in the car and it's it's hot out. And when my, my AC is ice cold. And, and But a lot of times I was idling. I was sitting in parking lots. And you, I don't want to sit there with the AC on idling in the parking lot. Because that's not good for you. And uh, so a lot of the time, like the four hours I had to wait in the morning, um... I just pop, I have pop out windows in the back and uh, I'm just sitting there and I could feel my skin getting grease. And I was in rest areas and you know, they got the little trickly water that doesn't do any good. And I was just like washing my hands and I took some water and I splashed it on my face and I could just feel it. I'm like, oh, that's so gross. My face must be so greasy. So yes, it was really good taking a shower. Uh, every, you know. The hot tub here is broken. I'm really disappointed about that because I just love sitting in a hot tub. But you know, I got there and the water is hot and it's just sitting there. But, you know, there's usually a crank on the wall. I'm like, where's the crank? And I call up the front desk and they're like, oh, no, that's never worked. And I'm like, why do you have a hot tub? And they advertise you have a hot tub, but oh, no, it's never worked. So anyway, uh, I did get a calzone last night. That was one of the things I wanted to do while I was in Denver. Get a calzone and I've got to go to uh, Winchell's Donuts and get oh my god they have these apple fritters i've never had anywhere else i couldn't find them anywhere else never had them before but they're just the most fantastic things ever um they also make uh oh they just make all kinds of stuff and i was going to get some stuff because my my idea was to get a calzone and get this and then take that with me and then that would be my meal at camping the thing is about the calzone is i forgot to look at the ingredients um i've had these before but now that i remember you know uh, 20 hindsight's 2020. Uh, I remember always saying hold the jalapeno because I can't handle hot food. <laughs> I forgot about that. 
So I'm eating this calzone last night and it just made me sweat more and it's just burning. Uh, luckily I got my angel milk, so uh, I was able to drink that. But I, yeah, I'm good to go. Uh, I got nothing but time. I'm, I'm always anxious and my kids will tell you that this will drive them crazy that, that if I say we're leaving at seven and it's 6.30 and we haven't left yet, <laughs> I'm like, let's go, let's go. And I know they hate that about me, but um, I grew up with a father who said we're going to leave at 7, and that meant like 8, 9 o'clock, you know, and that drove me nuts. So I think that's what makes me want to get going. So I really do want to get going, but I got nothing but time. I, You know, the hotel room is till 12, and I got to call around, and uh, you don't want to get up in the mountains too early. Uh, I want, you know, the place I want to go is close enough to Denver that, a lot of people go there over the weekend so I want to give them time to like pack their stuff up and get out so that when I get there uh, my favorite spot will not likely have people in it and there are times I've gone up there and there's someone there like oh they got my favorite spot and uh, I have like a second favorite spot but it's not as good as my favorite spot so uh, hopefully I don't know, I'm still undecided. If I drive around today and I, I pick up the part, if I have the part with me, I'll feel a lot better because it's supposed to be an easy fix. Um, and then I'll decide if I want to go up there. Because the thing I'm thinking, when I pulled out of the driveway of the, of the restaurant, there was a big bump. And if there's a loose wire or something, sometimes that's worse to have a loose wire because then you got to trace the wire. Um, I, I think I do still have a bundle of wire in my car. But, you know, it's like... Do I want to do that? Do, do I get a chance to get stuck in the mountains? I do have AAA, so if I break down on the highway, it's, they can at least get me off the highway. But if I'm in the mountains, uh, that's going to exceed the 100-mile the tow rate. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm torn. I'll see what happens today. But that's my status. I'm ahead of schedule. I was really happy with how the book turned out. I visited all these sites that I used to visit, and... Uh, that I made into my book, and that was really fun to do. So I'm, I'm happy for that. Uh, uh, boy, I just don't know what else to do. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna wait till uh, nine o'clock. Oh man, I went way over my time. This is supposed to be a 10 minute video. So <laughs> I'll see you later. I'm gonna upload this, clear my memory on my phone again, and uh, I'll decide what to do. And you guys take care.